friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Hello Bluebirds, Pig Out, Strawberry Jam, and Bloom and Grow. So I've stamped my images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with my bunny and I'm going to color her with E000 and E00. So I'm starting with the E00 and using that to lay in some shadows to define the edges of her face and ears, the underside of her arm and her neck and her little legs. And then I'm going to blend that out with the E000 and let that fade into the white on her belly and on her muzzle area. And I'll use my colorless blender to just help smooth that transition. And I'll color the inside of the bread with that E000 and again let that fade into the white. Next I'm going to work on the pig and for him I'm using YR000, YR00, and YR01. So I'm going to start with the YR01 and define the edges of his face. I'm also going to color in a bit of his nose. I want his nose to be darker than the rest of him, so I'm a little more heavy handed with that darkest shade. And then I'll also add a little shadow to the underside of his arms and legs and along the side of his back. And then I'm going to blend that out with the YR00. I want the center of his face to be nice and highlighted, so I'm keeping a lot of space there for my lightest shade, and that will be the YR000. I'm gonna finish off his ears and then bring that color all around closer to his nose, and also fill in the rest of his arms and his little belly. And while I have these markers out, I'm also going to throw a little YR01 onto my peaches. It's just a base layer. To that, I will add a little YR02 on the right hand side of each of those just to darken them up. And I'll blend that back out with the YR01 again and fill in the rest of that space. And then I'm even going to grab the YR04 and add a bit more color to those. Now they are still looking pretty orange, so I'll add some additional colors to those later on, but I just wanted to kind of get them started for now. And then I'm going to move on to adding a bit of rosy cheek and coloring in the insides of my critter's ears with R11 and R20. I added a bit of the R20 first and then blended that out with the R11. Also use the R20 to color in the bunny's nose and then do a little oval shape on their cheeks. And then I go around the oval shape with the R11 to blend it into the rest of their skin or fur. For my pig's hooves, I'm using W1, W3, and W5. And pardon the tiny little bugs, I seem to keep bringing them in with the flowers that I've been picking in my yard. Um, but anyway, I just use the W5 down at the bottom and blend it out with the W3 and then the W1. And I also use those shades to color in the knife. Then I switched to W00 and W1 and I wanted to add just a little bit of shading to my picnic blanket. I'm going to add a lot more detail to this in a minute, but I just wanted to have some initial shading underneath those layers that I'll be adding. I also colored in the jam spoon and now I'm going to come in with my B45 and start to do a little plaid blanket. So I just turned my paper until it felt a little bit more natural to be able to do these long thin lines. And I'm not worrying about whether or not the lines are perfectly even because this is fabric and it's kind of a little bit wrinkled up on the ground as well. So I don't think the lines have to be perfect. So don't stress yourself out about that. Um, but I did a few in the horizontal um, orientation and now I'm turning it and doing vertical lines and I'm spacing them out because I want to add some more detail to this 
Um, even though it looks really nice as it is, and that would certainly be fine, I just wanted to have more of a two-tone look. So I'm going to switch to B41 now, and I'm going to do the same exact thing, except I'm going to go across in the white spaces. So between those two darker blue lines, that's where I'm now adding these lines with this B41. And I did it going horizontally and now vertically as well. So now you can see that it really looks like a nice plaid. And I think that looks really cute. Next, I'm going to take BG11 and add a little shading to any of the glassware. So the little jam jar and the pitcher, which I'm going to fill with some lemonade in a little bit. And also the two little cups that are sitting off to the side. I wanted those to be clear glass as well. So just really outlining the image and then I'll come back and add some color in a bit. And so I'm going to start with the jam jar. So that is going to be uh, filled with some strawberry jam. And I used R22, R24, and R29. I did the R29 on the outside edges, but I only went up to the uh, aqua line. I didn't want to go all the way to the edge because that makes it really look like a glass jar. And I also made sure that my lightest shade, the R22, was over the word jam so it didn't get lost there. Then I colored in all of my strawberries with these same shades. Just use the R29 on one side and then blend it out with the R24 in the center and then the R22 on the opposite side. I'm also going to add a little bit of jam to the two pieces of bread that are on the plates. So I'm just using those same three shades so it matches the jelly that's in the jar and uh, adding that to the center of the bread. For the crust, I'm going to use E21, E23, and E25, and I'm going to shade that curved edge of the bread where it kind of straightens out and add a little depth there, and also just add a touch of that E25 on the opposite side and to the little crusts on the bread slices, and then blend out with the E23 and finish with the E21 and finish off the crust on the piece that's sliced right in front of it as well. And I wanted to color in the picnic basket in the same shades. I like to have at least two pops of the same color on a card, so it's nice to be able to color in images uh, in a similar color palette, if not the same, just so those colors are kind of spread around and your eye gets drawn around the card. So I use the E25 in the crease again, where the lid is a little bit open, and then blend it out with the E23 and the E21. And then for the basket part, I decided to darken it up just a bit by adding in E27 and then blending out with the E25. And then this time I'm going to finish with the E23 and do the handle as well. For the lemonade, I used Y000, Y11, and Y13. I'm going to color that very similar to how I did the jelly jar, and I'll do the two little cups of lemonade at the same time. So I used the Y13, my darkest shade, at the bottom and on the two sides, and then I'm getting softer as I go towards the center, so I used the Y11 and then filled in with the Y000, so we get a nice pale lemonade. I also added just a touch of Y11 to my peaches to warm them up a bit. And then for the leaves of my strawberries, I'm going to use YG17, just the one shade because they're so super tiny. And then for the leaves on the peaches, because they're a little bit larger, I started with the YG17 and then added in a bit of YG13 on their ends. I'm also going to uh, do the rim of the little plates with those two shades, just adding the YG17 on the back side and the YG13 toward the front. 
and then I filled in the middle with YG11. I needed a bit more blue on the card, so I decided to do the little napkin that's in the picnic basket to match my plaid picnic blanket. And then I'm going to color the little bird with these shades as well. So this time I'll have it in three different places on the card. And so I use the B45 on the backside and on the underside of his wing. And then I blended that out with the B41. And then I decided to pull in my BG11 as well and use that as my highlight shade to color in the face and the rest of the wing. I used W5 for the beak and then went back to my R11 and R20 and added in the R22 to do the little breast of the bluebird. So I started from the bottom with that. And while I was at it, I decided to color in my butterflies to match. And for them, I put the darkest pink, the R22, closest to the body. And then I'm blending toward the outside edge with the R20. And then filling in with the R11 on the edges. And I'll throw a little bit of the R11 onto my peaches as well. I'll finish off the butterflies with Y15 for their bodies, just to tie in that yellow another place. Then I'll take my black Sakura Jelly Roll pen, just get it started off to the side, and then I'm gonna go over the eyes of my pig and my bluebird, just to make them nice and bright and shiny again. And then I will take a white Sakura Jelly Roll pen, and I'm gonna add a few little shine marks did one on the jam jar and I'll also do it on the pitcher of lemonade. I also decided to add a few little white seeds to the strawberries. Didn't show up that well on top of the yellow since it's such a pale color but there's enough to have just a little bit of something there for some extra detail. So once I finish up the pitcher of lemonade, I'm going to trim all of these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I've taken the Hello Bluebird Summer Woods scene and die cut that out of some Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. Then I separated out all the pieces into sky, greenery, and tree trunks. So I've got all the sky pieces laid out on my Waffle Flower Mini Media Mat right now. And I am pouncing on some Distress Oxide ink in tumbled glass. And the reason I'm pouncing it on is first of all so that I don't bend any of these delicate pieces because they all need to fit back together perfectly like a puzzle. But also this pouncing kind of gives a little bit of texture and helps it look more like a cloudy sky because there are parts that are a little bit whiter and parts that have a little bit more blue. So you just get a really nice, um, you know, like variation of color. So once I have all of these completely covered in that blue, I'm going to tap some of that ink on the corner of my mat and water it down and pick that up with a very thin paintbrush and do some splatter effect just to give it a little bit more texture and a little bit more movement in that background. I'll set all of these pieces off to the side to dry and clean up my mat and then I'm going to work on all the greenery pieces and this time I'm pouncing on some Twisted Citron Distress Oxide ink. And that is going to give it a really vibrant, bright chartreuse green undertone. And then on top of that, I'm going to add some mowed lawn just to create a bit more depth. So I'm going to pounce that on mainly on the edges and uh, keep some of that Twisted Citron shining through so that, you know, it just has that bit of depth on each of those little die cut pieces. Then I'm going to tap some of that onto the side and water that down and do some splatter effect again. And that's really going to help those greenery pieces look like there's 
little leaves and things scattered throughout, you know, so it's made up of more than just a solid piece. And then for the three trees, I'm going to use some gathered twigs. I thought that was appropriate. <laughs> so I tried to add just a little bit more color toward the top and then get a little bit softer at the bottom again, just to have a bit of variation of color on these die cuts. I took a piece of Lawn Fawn Noble Fur cardstock and scored and folded that to a standard size card. So it is eight and a half inches long by three and a half inches tall. So I actually cut it down to eight and a half by seven and then scored it in half at the three and a half mark. And now I'm going to take the frame from that Summer Woods scene die and adhere that to the front of my card base. And then I'm going to work on all of these bits like a puzzle. So off screen, I also did the grass. I forgot to do that one on screen because it was just um, took up too much room on my media mat and forgot to turn my camera back on to film it. But I did that in the exact same way that I did all the rest of the greenery. And since that's the largest piece, I'm going to go ahead and fit that in first. And then I decided to use that die as like a guide, but you do have to keep in mind that the die when it's facing up at you like this is in the reverse of the die cut pieces. So you have to work in the opposite direction. So I started with the little bush that was closest to the edge and then fit the tree next to it. And when in doubt, you can kind of fit your pieces in upside down and they should fit perfectly. And that way you can make sure that you have the exact right piece. I'm using my favorite liquid glue, Tombow Mono Multi Glue, to adhere all of these little pieces. And the reason I chose that is because you have that little bit of wiggle room to be able to adjust things. And with all of these little tiny delicate scallops and edges with those bushes and the treetops and all of that, you want to make sure that you can really just adjust things and um, kind of just shift them if need be. So I really am approaching this little scene just the way I normally do a puzzle. I start with the outside edges and work my way toward the center. So I did the bottom and then the right hand side and then I took care of the top and now I'm coming down the left hand side. I just find it easiest to kind of block things in and then you have a smaller bit of space to work with so it just becomes easier and easier to fit all of those smaller pieces inside. So I'm going to add this other tree here and I'm not going to worry about the little bits that go between the tree branches just yet. Um, that will be my last step since those are just the tiniest little bits. Um, I like to just make sure that I have all the big pieces in place first and then I can tackle those. I will also say that if you have a pair of reverse tweezers, um, I think that would be a good thing to use, especially for these smaller little pieces, just to keep your fingers out of the glue. Um, I have a pair somewhere, but for some reason I can't find them. <laughs> That's really unusual because I really usually know right where everything is in my craft room, but um, for some reason they seem to have walked away. So I just had to use my fingers. Um, but once I finished this background, I did have to get up and go wash my hands because they were a little bit sticky just from pressing all of these little bits in there. So I'm down to the final few pieces that go between these tree branches. And I will say this was the trickiest part, but it really isn't too bad. You just have to pay attention to the shape of the scallops at the top. At least that's how it worked for me. Um, and then it was pretty easy to just fit them all in the right spots. And even with those super, super tiny ones, um, like these last three will be after I get these two done, um, you know, it's just pay attention to the direction that the scallop is facing and it's fairly easy to uh, put those inside. And again, if you have some reverse tweezers, I think they would really come in handy, especially with these tiny little fiddly bits. But, um, you know, I managed with just my fingers, so you can too if, if that's all you've got. 
So I've popped that card base into my Misty and I'm going to stamp a sentiment from Typed Every Day using Versafine Onyx Black ink. And I'm just doing the little hello there sentiment. I stamped that down really gently and then stamped that down one more time. So it was a nice bold impression. And then I'm going to do an insert for the inside of my card and I'm stamping that in Lawn Fawn's Freshly Cut Grass. And I'm using the image that has the pig and the bunny again, but also the little goose and the sentiment that says, you make me smile. And I just trim that down to be um, just a quarter of an inch smaller than the card base. So it would give me a nice border on the outside edges when I place that inside. Just glued that down with some liquid glue. And then I will bring in my images and get to the fun part to set my scene here. So I'm going to start in the center with my picnic blanket. I wanted that to be under the center tree, so I'm just going to adhere that down in front. And then I'm going to add my pig and my bunny so that they're sitting on either side of that facing each other. And I'm going to have them hanging over the edge a bit just because I want to fill in as much of this card front as I can and really give a lot of space on that blanket for their picnic items. I don't want it to look too crowded. I want to have everything spaced nicely. So I'm going to add the picnic basket to the left of the bunny and the lemonade pitcher to the right of the pig. Again, just trying to, you know, fill in that scene and make it look more expansive. I'll have one of the lemonade glasses sitting in front of the lemonade. And then the other one is going to be for the bunny. So I'm going to put that over on her side, um, kind of near her little paw there. Then I'm going to take my next largest image, which is the loaf of bread and have that be between them and I'll have the jam jar down a little bit in front of that overlapping it's going to push the bread back further and just make the scene kind of uh, be a little bit more deep and uh, same with the little plate of jelly bread I put that in front of the pig which kind of pushes the pig back in the scene and the bunny as well for her plate and I'm going to take the little jam knife and lay that down on the front of the picnic blanket, kind of overlapping the edge of the piggy's plate. And then I'll have my little bluebird over on the right hand side there. I'm just going to continue filling in that scene, adding those butterflies now in the sky to kind of bring the scene upward a little bit, draw your eye toward that sentiment. And then I've got all of these adorable little peaches and strawberries, and I'm gonna kind of scatter those around and just kind of fill things in. So I'll add two of the peaches overlapping and have those in front of the little picnic basket, and I'll have another one of the peaches over by the lemonade. First, I was gonna tuck it behind the cup, but I didn't really like the way that looked, so I had to uh, remove that and uh, add that down in front of the other side of the lemonade pitcher. And then I've got my five little strawberries, so I'm going to just fill those in so we have those pretty pops of red, you know, scattered throughout. So I have two of the strawberries over by the glass of lemonade. And then the other three strawberries I'm going to put over on the left hand side. Actually, I'm only going to put two of them on the left hand side. And then uh, the, the last one I'm going to add onto the picnic blanket. So it'll be near the uh, strawberry jam. So just added one more dot of glue and set that strawberry down in place. And then I'm going to finish off this scene with just a little bit of Stardust Stickles. I wanted to have a bit of sparkle on this card, so I added it to the butterflies and the lemonade in the pitcher and in the glasses. And I'm also adding it to the jelly on the bread and to the jam jar. 
just have to be really careful not to overlap the um, white gel pen because it will make it dissolve. I also added it to the peaches and that is going to complete my card for today. This is my first official card for the Hello Bluebird design team. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. There's another peek at the inside. If you did like it, please be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of the products I use today, you'll find them listed and linked in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.